Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math for Geometry, we're going to talk about two very important theorems, the equidistance theorems. So just going back to talking about words and word choice, math is very typically pretty straightforward in terms of its word choice. Equidistance. Equi meaning equal, distance meaning uh, the distance between two points or the length between two points. So the same distance theorems are what we're going to talk about. Let's back up a second and talk about uh, some things you need to know before we uh, review the theorems. First is that in math, the distance and geometry, the distance between two objects is the length of the shortest path joining them. So the distance between the blue dot and the red dot is along the black line. If you take the red line, I call that meandering. That's definitely not something you want to do when you do your two column proofs. The distance postulate states that a line segment is the shortest path between the two points. So what I just said, if we want to move from the blue to the black line, in math the distance is going to be that length along the black line from the blue dot to the black dot. All right, if two points are the same distance, they're equal distance from a third point, then the third point is said to be equidistant from the two points. So if I have point A and it's the same distance from B and the same distance from C, then I know that A is equidistant from both B and C. And that's how I would say it. A is equidistant from B and C. Right, so where does that leave us? Well, let's talk first about perpendicular bisectors. The perpendicular bisector of a segment is the line that bisects and is perpendicular to that segment. So I'm going to use my trusted pen here perpendicular bisector. If I have a segment, and that segment, uh, let's call AB, and I want to create the perpendicular bisector for that segment, then that uh, perpendicular bisector, let's call it CD, bisects the segment into two equal halves. So A, we'll call it AE, is congruent to EB. And it also forms a right angle with CD, forms a right angle with AB. So I know AEC, CEB, DEB, and AED are all right angles. I know that AE and EB are congruent. So that's a perpendicular, perpendicular bisector. So there are two components to the perpendicular bisector. One is that the bisector or the line forms a right angle with the segment and it, uh, the second is that it bisects the segment or splits it into two pieces. Okay, so let's talk about theorem 24. It says that if two points are each equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then those two points determine the perpendicular bisector of that segment. So I have point one here, it's equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. Endpoint one and endpoint two, we'll call it B and D and we'll call point 1A. And then I have point C, which is also equidistant, that's point two, from B and D. Then I know the line that is drawn through A, I'm trying my best to make this straight, through C, this squiggly line here, AC, is gonna be the perpendicular bisector of that segment, that's theorem 24. So again, it forms right angles with that segment and it's gonna bisect that segment forming two congruent segments. Okay, theorem 25 says, and by the way, I asked my students for both of these theorems in, the, in their proofs, the two column proofs for the reasons to write out this particular reason as a theorem verbatim. Uh, okay, so let's move on to theorem 25. If a point is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment, then it is equidistant from the points of the segment. So if I have <clears throat> a uh, point A and point C, and I know that AC is the perpendicular bisector of BD, then I can take any point on AC, I can draw a line from that point to B and from that point to D, and I know that B to that point, let's call it F, is going to be the same as F to D. Okay, I can pick another point let's call it G, and I draw a segment from B to G and from D to G, I know that those two segments are also going to be congruent. So I can choose any point on this line, draw a segment to the endpoints of the given segment, and I know 
that the uh, segments from that point on the perpendicular bisector to the endpoints are going to be congruent. So again, theorem 25, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of that segment. Now what I find uh, with my students is that uh, most of them are pretty good at recognizing theorems 24 and 25 for what's called a kite, where I have the points of the perpendicular bisectors that are on either side of the segment. So here's point one and here's point two. I say they're vertex, vertex, or it's on opposite sides of the segment. They can see or recognize these types of problems. Where the students run into problems is when the points for the perpendicular bisector lie perhaps on the segment, so it's the midpoint of the segment, and then somewhere else either above or below the segment, or where I have two points that are on the same side of the segment, so in the first, first case. So case number one and case number two tend to be more difficult for the students. Case number three uh, tends to be pretty straightforward because that's typically how we learn about perpendicular bisectors for segments. But don't forget that in problems you can get uh, views that look both like one and two where we have uh, the two points, one on and one outside, and the other both two on one side of uh, the segment that the uh, two points construct a line that bisects or that are perpendicular bisectors of that segment. I'm not sure if that made complete sense, at least the last part of it. But remember that there can be different views for constructing the perpendicular bisectors. And I give you three examples of what that might look like.